So you've got your notebook and a pen and a timer set for 90 minutes. And if you don't have those things yet, press pause on me, go get them and come right back. Hi, and welcome to Write It Out for the week of April 7th, 2023. Write It Out is brought to you by Write for Wellness, for you and for Enliven Muskoka. Enliven Muskoka provides services and programming to anyone whose life has been impacted by cancer. If you can, please consider making a donation or volunteering for Enliven Muskoka today. So what is Write It Out? Write It Out is 90 minutes of time that you set aside for yourself um, once a week uh, or a bunch of days in a week. But it's time that you've set aside for yourself just to do some writing and find out what's on your mind, as Neil Gaiman has said. Uh, I like to uh, understand how I feel about something by writing about it, he said. That always um, enlightens me. So that's what we do. We turn off the editor in, the he in our head. We don't worry about spelling, punctuation, or grammar, and we just write. I'll provide you with a word prompt and a story prompt, and you can use either one or both of those prompts to help you with your writing. Or if you already have something in mind, then please just begin. Uh, but having something just helps you begin, even if it reminds you of something else. Uh, it's all good. And what to write? Well, you might want to write a story or a letter or a list or a journal entry or a poem or a song. Uh, it's limitless. Whatever comes to mind for you today is just right. So I do like to begin uh, with a very short relaxation, and that's just to help separate the busyness of your day from your writing time. It's kind of like a, a reminder to yourself that, okay, now everything else turns off and I can just focus on writing. So let's uh, get present, shall we? So you can either watch the screen or close your eyes and take a nice deep breath. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Relax your eyes, your ears, your jaw. Relax your shoulders down away from your ears. Your shoulders, follow your arms down, relaxing. Your shoulders to elbows. And elbows into wrists. And wrists into hands. Just relax both your arms and your hands. Feel the heat and the aliveness that's there in your hands. It's kind of a tingle. And again, from the base of your skull, relaxing your spine, your throat, all your spine down, relaxing behind your heart space, your lungs, your belly, right into your sitting bones. Just relax. And from your sitting bones and your hips, all your legs from hips across to knees, and from knees down into ankles, and ankles into feet. And just feel again the heat that's there in your feet. Feel the aliveness. Feel the ground or the floor beneath your feet. Feel the support that's there, the grounding. Just relax. Take, take one more nice deep breath. And so our word prompt for this week is the word promise or promised or promises or promising or whatever that word makes you think of. And the story prompt is from the book Original Highways by Roy McGregor. And I'd like to dedicate this uh, session of Write It Out to my father-in-law, Bill Charlton, who passed away in January of this year. He, um, we just had a celebration of life for him this weekend. And he's kind of been at the, the front of my mind and he would 
love to sit on a riverbank anywhere. So this is dedicated to him. Goss, now in his mid-50s, became fascinated with river pollutants in a unique manner. He grew up in Kenora, where his father was warden of the area prison in the early 1970s, when mercury poisoning from area pulp mills became a national issue. He was an impressionable youngster when a fishing ban went into effect along the Wabagoon and English River system and led to the economic collapse of Grassy Narrows First Nation, where a successful commercial fishery had operated for decades. While both the paper and chemical companies that had been polluting the waters closed down in 1976, the mercury remained in the water for decades. That was reflected in my father's jail, remem remembers Goss. It was filling up with people's social ills. Ever since then, he has dedicated his research to finding a workable balance between a sustainable environment and a sustainable economy. We can find that, he says. We have to. Most people don't think about the watershed because they can't, because they can turn on the tap and get water. We essentially don't appreciate water until it's gone. That's your story prompt. Again, the word prompt is the word promise. You've got 90 minutes on your timer. Press pause on me and write it out. And welcome back. Please take a moment to thank yourself and maybe even thank the location where you're doing your writing today. Maybe you're inside looking out a window or you've got a lovely day where you are and you can write outside. Either way, um, yes, please be sure to uh, show some gratitude to yourself for your writing, for taking the time for you today. So we'll finish with our spring poem called Canadian Shield Spring by Ali, and that's aliespoetry.ca. Heard a whippoorwill out walking this morning, a morning like one at the beginning of the world, or it's the end of the world now, more likely. Or maybe not a whippoorwill, I don't know most birds. I know I did see a flash of black and red on a bulrush, or maybe a cattail. I don't know most plants, but I know this pond and the red-winged blackbird. I know the melt of snow, the ice pocked and heaving, river water awakened and running beyond. I know these two geese, mates returned, watching, riding the waves. And th though I don't see him, the beaver, I see the tree stumps he shaped, sharpened like javelins, pointed like spears. I see the flint cheekbones of the earth emerged from snow into sun, her soft breasts of moss, her skin of pine needles, her brown grass greening in spots still wet, concealing fragrant mud. A morning like the one at the beginning of the world, the dawn shaking out like a blanket around us. I put my lips to the earth. I stretch myself full on her smooth rocks, withered grass, smell of wet leaves and shade. I stretch my arms along her rigid bones, calling down the sun, calling up the warmth, conducting her warmth and his, the sun's, through me, into my bones, heart to beating heart, and palm to upturned palm. I forgive her. I forgive us both for who we were all winter. And that's write it out for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. Stay well. Bye for now.